Yeah. <laughs> 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 Good morning. It is day 24. I'll be getting back on trail today um, from Kenny Meadows and entering the Sierra section. The first 40 or 50 miles of trail um, aren't, we gain slowly gain elevation, but it's not like really in the Sierra Mountains the first couple days. Um, so I don't think I really filmed at all yesterday, so just kind of a recap. Um, so today is day 24, the 22nd, um, got to Kenny Meadows on the 20th. Um, so to get to Kenny Meadows, the trail across the road, you walk 0.8-ish miles to the general store. Um, and from there I took a shuttle that runs to Grumpy Bears, which is another place to stay in town. That's three miles down the road. Um, now interesting things to know about Kenny Meadows as a small town, that's a population of about 200, um, is there no, is no um, power to the, um, town, so everything is run off of generators, um, but anyways, um, stayed yesterday, no, stayed the 20th and majority of the 21st at Grumpy Bears. Um, Grumpy Bears was great, the camping was a little bit of a further walk, I mean, 0.3, 0.2 miles or so, um, shower, laundry were free, everything like that, the food was amazing, um, in comparison to the general store, um, there's more of a bar area um, versus just kind of like a cooking shack and it stays open later. Um, last call for food at Grumpy's is 6.45, whereas at the general store is 5 p.m. Um, so anyway, yesterday I sprayed all of my clothes, my tent and backpack with permethrin um, as an extra tick and mosquito repellent. Um, and then just kind of sorted through my gear, got my stuff ready, and then took the 4 p.m. shuttle back to the general store. Um, and at the general store, I shipped my broken pad home to Chad so that um, he can send return to REI. Um, very reasonable shipping rates and everything like that. Um, and then I slept here last night. Um, the tenting is much closer to the general store um, than it is in comparison to Grumpy's. Um, toilet's a little bit nicer. Um, there is a movie screen and projector. No one used it last night, so I don't know how that was. The Wi-Fi definitely was better at Grumpy's versus the general store, and I would say the food, I didn't order any food from the general store, but when I saw the food was definitely better at Grumpy's versus the general store. Um, but anyway, at the general store, um, was where most of the, a lot of the hikers who are planning to leave tomorrow, um, our meeting up and I grouped up with Jocelyn, Vicky, and Cole again. Um, those are the hikers that I spent the last two nights on trail with hiding from the bear. So I grouped up with them, um, exchanged tech phone numbers, um, and Garmin numbers though because phone numbers probably won't work in this year because we don't have service. So exchanged our Garmin, our satellite phone numbers so we can reach, contact each other. Um, and we all plan to do a seven day stretch over Kearsarge Pass and the Bishop. So um, as of right now, we all plan to um, kind of stick together, at least at camp, um, and stick together for the next seven day stretch, uh, just and group up a little bit. Um, talked about, you know, our plan for Whitney. So our rough plan for the next four days, or next seven days is, Six, four days, we'll do 64 miles, um, which will put us at the base of the, we'll put us at the trail to, that goes up to Whitney. Um, then we'll spend a day doing Mount Whitney, um, and then the next day up and over Forester Pass, and then the next day into Bishop. Um, and the four of us all agree, we don't care to summit Mount Whitney as a um, sunrise hike. Um, I'm sure it's really pretty. I've seen pictures, um, but in order to do that, um, because it's an eight mile trail to get up to the top, you have to wake up at midnight to 1 a.m. Um, and then it's really cold up top and that's just not something I'm <laughs> really interested in. And thankfully none of them are too. Um, so we'll just do it during the day and it'll probably be less crowded and it'll be more tolerable warmth wise. Um, I don't think there's any dangerous river crossings for at least the first couple days, if not even for this first stretch. 
But I think that's basically the update. Um, we should be leaving here in the next 15 minutes or so. Um, just one little stressor is that Jocelyn got her pole stolen last night, which is actually really, really weird for the hiking community. Um, most of the time around the trail and on, on around the trail and on trail, you can just leave your backpack, all your stuff wherever, and no one's gonna steal it. Um, but Jocelyn got her pole stolen yesterday, so she's a little bit stressed about that. So that might delay her today. I'm not quite sure. Um, but we still plan to head out early this morning. Jocelyn stayed behind at the general store figuring out her pole situation. She's hoping someone accidentally took them to Grumpy Bears and that she'll get them back. But otherwise, trying to find one or two poles from the hiker box to hike out with. Um, and then she can get new poles in the next town or if the outfitter opens up in time in Kenny Meadows. Um, but she told me, Cole, and Vicky to go ahead without her and that she would catch up. So we are officially back on trail at 7.50. This is what it looks like back on trail after Kenny Meadows. A couple other things I was thinking about that I don't know if I went over. Um, so Chad sent me a package to Kenny Meadows um, with my snow gear. I don't think I really went into what that is. So, um, for safety with the snow, I got micro spikes. Um, they're basically a little change you add to the bottom of your shoes that help you get more grip with snow. Um, I also am carrying an ice axe. Now, because it's been a, such a, I mean, an average snow year, followed by a really higher than average or quicker snow melt. The ice axe people are commenting isn't necessary and honestly the majority of hikers are not carrying the ice axe. Um, but I already had it here. It's a half a pound. Um, if, if I end up not using it for this section and keep hearing that it's not necessary, then I will probably send it home with Chad when he comes to see me in Bishop. Um, but right now I figured give me a little bit extra confidence going into this section at least that has the Mount Whitney and then the highest pass. Um, and in case you're wondering, yes, I've obviously watched YouTube videos how to use it, um, but I did go out last winter and spend a couple hours practicing with it. Um, never in a life-threatening situation like the Sears when I would have to use it, but I have had it used it in reality. Um, but most hikers, like I said, aren't carrying the ice axe. Um, the other thing I did was add some uh, snow baskets to my poles. Uh, so these circular things I did not have before, um, but it stops your poles from sinking into the snow. Again, with how fast the snow is melting, it may or may not actually be necessary, but they're lightweight um, and really beneficial if you do need them. And then, what else? I added a bear canister because that is required um, for safety because there's much higher population of bears in the Sierras. The bear canister weighs two and a half pounds um, and I was able to cram six days of food in it. Um, so I'm hiking out with seven days of food. The first day will not fit in the bear can, but that's okay because I'll eat it all today and the bear can will um, have all my food that's left over at the end of the day for storage. Um, and then I also added in my hoodie or fleece. Um, I had sent that home after a couple days with my when I sent my boots home because I didn't need it yet. Um, but now I added in that extra warm layer. So probably added in I don't know somewhere four to five pounds of snow gear. So I did weigh my pack heading out from Kenny Meadows with seven days of food and one liter of water. 
my pack weighs about 37, 38 pounds, um, which honestly isn't too bad. Uh, I think it weighed more when I was carrying the five liters of water um, throughout the last week or two. Um, so, and it definitely feels comfortable. It feels heavy, but it feels comfortable and doable. So not too bad. Um, but yeah, just thought I'd go over what I added to my pack for this section. It's 11 o'clock and I'm just leaving my first uh, break spot. I've been here for about an hour. Um, haven't hiked 6.4 miles so far. Um, what I'm realizing with this heavier pack is that I'll need to take breaks more often than I did before um, to just take the pack off and let my shoulders and back rest. Um, you know, the water carries that we were doing the last week or two really did help us train with the weight. But the thing is, with the water carries, they were never more than like, you know, they weren't bad for more than like 7 to 10 miles because we drank the water and the weight lessened. Now the only way our weight is lessening is by eating our daily food, which is 1 to 2 pounds per day. Um, but so far, the trail has been really gentle. Today we're doing a 17 mile day with like 3,300 feet of gain. It's been very gentle gain and it's been beautiful as I expected and hoped from the Sierras. This is just amazing. No one else around. This big open meadow. You can see off in the distance, those mountains right there in the background are above tree line and have little patches of snow on them. That's probably the higher Sierra, so we're still in the kind of entry process to getting there. But I can't get over how beautiful and amazing this land is. Second rest spot at I think 11.2 miles into the day. just left um, the Kern River Monat, Monac or Monash Meadow area um, that's about 14.3 miles from Kennedy Meadows. Um, the river was shin high up to knee depth 
um, and all the swallows underneath the bridge. Stayed there for about two hours, which means I've taken over four hours of breaks today. Um, but originally, it was just Cole and I, and we we're just kind of waiting to s for Vicky and Jocelyn to show up to see how much further they wanted to go today. Um, but instead, many, many other people came. Emma and Georgia, Colgate, and like four or five other hikers, in addition to Vicky and Jocelyn. And all those hikers, they were just planning on staying there. And probably for that reason alone, or not for that reason, and the fact that um, I wanted to do more than 14.3 miles today, um, I decided to start moving. Um, it's five o'clock. I've got an hour more of hiking planned to do another 2.7 miles. And if I sit there much longer, I wouldn't have gotten up. And I just don't want to necessarily camp where there's going to be like 15 other hikers. <laughs> seems fun but kind of become like a little social party area a little bit too much for me made it to the campsite exactly 17 miles after leaving um, Kenny Meadows. The water is right down there. Today felt great. Um, did over four hours of breaks throughout the day and still got to camp by 540. Uh, you can see my sweat marks. Um, and uh, the backpack felt held felt heavy of course but really manageable um, and it was so beautiful I know this is barely considered the Sierras we're only 17 miles into the section and not even in the high Sierras not in above tree line uh, but it was just so beautiful and reminds me a lot of hiking in northern Utah um Wyoming Idaho and Montana um, so if today is any indication, um, I will be taking more breaks than I usually do just to give my back and shoulders a rest with a heavier pack um, and get into camp a little bit later. Um, but that is totally okay by me. Um, it really was a beautiful day. Uh, and with how many breaks and how often um, I took breaks, it felt super easy. So um, I'm gonna wait for Cole or Vicky Drosselin to confirm that this is where they wanna camp. Um, set up tent, eat dinner, um, and go to bed. Uh, today, I mean, difference, biggest difference so far in terms of carrying things in the Sierra, I don't know if that's the right way to phrase it at all, but have not had to carry more than one liter of water at a time um, because water is so, so plentiful. Uh, before this, the minimum water I carried usually was two liters um, and usually two to four. Uh, so this has felt amazing um, to have all this water and be able to drink cold water frequently because um, in Southern California when you have to filter that much water time by the time you drink the water it's usually really really warm or hot um, but because we only have to drink filter one liter at a time it usually stays pretty cool uh, so that is very very nice I mean I, I've done it a couple times it's not like you don't die but so it, you just that, lie there feeling 